We are back with another day of the Hoop Scoop Media Top 100 Countdown. And at the number 62 team in the country, we have the Utah Utes. What's up, college basketball fans? I'm Hoop Scoop Media co-founder Austin Getchy, and welcome to the Hoop Scoop Media Top 100 College Basketball Teams Countdown. In this series, we'll be counting down our top 100 teams for next season and releasing a video every day until the college basketball season begins. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and give our social medias a follow. Simple things like that help more college basketball fans like you enjoy our content. With that being said, enjoy the rest of the video and 99 other videos in this series. Over his career, there's nothing that head coach Craig Smith has done more than build programs up and overachieve. His first stop was at South Dakota, where he turned the Coyotes into a top 100 team nationally. Then he took over at Utah State and won immediately, making two tournament appearances and having clinched another before COVID hit. His latest stop is Utah, where he hasn't broken through big time yet. However, he improved drastically from year one to year two, despite not having a much improved roster. It's only a matter of time before Utah is consistently making a tournament under Smith. However, if Smith will get better this year, he will have to do so without the service of some key players from odd share. Wing Lazar Stefanovic stayed in conference and transferred to UCLA. Forward Marco Anthony exhausted his eligibility and bench guard Mike Saunders Jr. committed to McNeese. Despite those losses, Smith gets his best player back for his fifth year in big man Brandon Carlson. He was one of the best players in the Pac-12 last year, being named to the all-conference first team. Carlson is elite on both sides of the ball. On offense, he's an efficient scorer and has even started to expand his range, even though he's not super efficient from there yet. On defense, he's a dominant rim protector, averaging two blocks a game on a 7.2 block percentage. Another starter Utah returns is guard Raleigh Worcester. Worcester isn't much of a scorer, but is a very good passer. In Pac-12 play, he had an assist rate of 31.6%, which led to conference. He followed Craig Smith from Utah State and has good size for a point guard. Utah also returns double-digit scorer Gabe Madsen. Madsen takes most of his shots from three-point range and connected on a solid 37% clip last season, despite battling some injuries in conference play. One transfer Smith brought in that could slide into the starting lineup is in-conference transfer Cole Bajama from Washington. Bajama is another guy primarily used as a shooter, shooting 36% from three-point range while starting for the Huskies. Smith got a commitment from another Pac-12 starter in the portal in Colorado big man Lawson Lovering. Lovering isn't a high usage player, but is a good rim protector and a capable rebounder, especially on the offensive end. The last Division I transfer to Utes got is Georgia Tech point guard Davion Smith. He was a very good passer this season, while not turning the ball over at a high rate, and is a very good athlete. However, he's yet to put all the pieces together, but if he does, he can be a very impactful player. Although, he's unlikely to play this year, as he's a two-time transfer who, to my knowledge, has not graduated. Utah also returns forward Ben Carlson, who started last year. He wasn't a high-usage offensive option, but was a fish from inside, and also a solid rebounder on both ends. Smith added a junior college transfer with the addition of Salt Lake Community College guard Hunter Erickson. He started his career at BYU, and that's the U title of passing, averaging over five assists per game. The U has some rising sophomores returning. One is Kevakeda, a big man that excels in the boards and protecting the rim. Wilburn's exact A junior also returns, who wasn't efficient last year, but has an intriguing skill set for his size and saw some solid minutes. Luca Tarlock, who played sparingly, also returned. Smith also brought in a two-person freshman class. Karahan Efeoglu is a skilled forward who averaged nearly 12 points on the third-place Turkey team at U19 this summer. They also added Jake Wallen, a forward coming back from his Mormon mission, who was formally committed to BYU. Overall, the success of this Utah team will come down to how much Craig Smith can elevate the roster and how big of a role Brandon Carlson can carry. One thing that worries me about this team is the lack of players who can create their own shot, but that might be less of an issue with the passers the team has, plus Utah has a big lineup overall. I currently have Utah sitting at 7th in the Pac-12, and while I don't think this is the year Craig Smith makes a tournament year, it's not far off. Utah fans, comment below your thoughts and where you'd personally have a huge rank this season. We will be back tomorrow for the number 61 team in the country. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss it.